And so to have a husband that can sing like that, it's, I, it's free. Yeah, I he's free. free of charge. He's handsome, reliable. <laughs> I'm lucky. What goes up must go down. Keep your pretty little feet planted on the ground. This album is, you know, it's kind of more than just music. It's like turning a page in a new chapter of your life. For sure. We started recording songs about five or six years ago, and then we finally finished it last year. I had a publishing deal in Nashville for a few years. Right before we got married, we were in a really bad car wreck, and I broke my neck. We just thought, decided it was time to move back to Texas for me to be close to family. A year after the, the wreck, I got diagnosed with um, a bunch of different autoimmune disease type stuff and then Lyme disease, and then Epstein-Barr. I spent years trying to figure out, you know, how to heal from all that, and ended up, by the grace of God, finding some people who helped me heal holistically. I know that's not for everyone, but it worked for me. I'm just a different person than I was a few years ago, and never thought I would be able to get to do what I love to do again, which is music. I was super fortunate to be a part of your album release show. Thank you so much for coming. It was such a great night and you got to share that with everybody. How did it feel to be on that stage and performing? I wanted it to be a warm atmosphere and I wanted everyone to, to hear the songs and the stories behind them and we just wanted to have fun and, and we did. And both of you had fun because they were both up on stage. Jordan, if I didn't know better, I would think you were a regular musician. No, oh, I had to I had to break those calluses back in. Well, he doesn't give himself enough credit. He he wrote he co-wrote two of the songs with me on the album. Plus, he's one of the best harmony singers I've ever heard. And so to have a husband that can sing like that, I, it's free. It's, yeah, he's free. free of charge. He's handsome. I'm lucky. I'm a lucky girl. Uh, I did mess one song totally up. Played the wrong one right from the beginning, so I had to. Was that the song that's actually about messing up? <laughs> well, I had just gotten through telling a story about how I wrote a song about marriage and arguing and all these things, and he's playing a different song than everyone else. No, no, no. Else. I'm starting it, and nobody else is doing anything, and everybody's just like, what is he I doing? I said, wrong song. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, take two. So what'd your friends say when they saw you up on stage? One of them said, we know who the boss is. Um, and I'm trying to remember <laughs> what else, but... They're just giving you a hard work, time. You did work. great. When did y'all's love story begin? Oh man, oh, we were 13, I guess, when we met. Actually, she's older than me. I was. That was kind of a big he deal back then. Always has to throw that one yeah, in there. Eight, eighth grade. Who looks older? I'm not getting into this. <laughs> yeah. So my dad was a football coach, so we moved around everywhere. So his first head high school job was in her hometown of Rotan, which is out in West Texas. We liked each other, whatever, when you're eighth grade. But then we moved and didn't see each other much at all for about 10 years. And and uh, got back together, I guess. She was in Nashville and I was finishing up at UT. Now, everybody thinks we just were, you know, eighth grade sweethearts all the way through, but it really wasn't that way. The songs were also special. You can feel your heart in all of them. Is there a song that people tend to gravitate towards? I feel like the one that so many people have related to the most is a song called Betty Jo I wrote for my grandmother. Gosh, she had so many quirks. She loved to shoot guns and hunt arrowheads and <laughs> If I remember correctly, she's also a big fan of Natty Light. Yeah, she had um, a case, always Popcorn had a case. And Natty Light. I love where her heart is. <laughs> of all beers, Natty Light. She was awesome. We were best friends. Yeah. And uh, it took me a while to write that song, but I'm glad I did. What does the songwriting process look like? I have to draw from friends who have, like, are single, who have relationship drama now that I'm, so I'm like, please tell me your stories so I can I write some songs. Not all these songs are, there's some lying, <laughs> cheating songs in there that I didn't have anything to do with. So. You co-wrote Oh Tonight with Josh Abbott, yes. and that features Casey Musgraves as well. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that song. We wrote that song one night, and honestly, and he would say the same thing, neither one of us thought twice about it. Two years later, I was in Nashville, and he called me, and he said, hey, um, do you remember that song we wrote that one night? And I said, kind of. He said, well, do you mind if I cut it? And um, this girl named Casey Musgraves that I've been singing with in Texas is going to sing it with me. And I was like, go for it. And uh, lo and behold, it ended up being a, a hit here. So I got Texas Country Song of the Year. That's really special and so funny how it all unfolds like that. I know, like isn't that. that weird how it happens sometimes? <laughs> there is you know, immense amount of great things and joy happening also on the other side of a lot of hardship. Right. What did that teach you about yourself? I thought I was strong 
until I was just knocked on my butt. I learned to lean on people because I, I used to not, you know, I was so prideful about that and learned I had a great husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what did it show you about your relationship? I don't want to cry. It's okay if you do. Many people do on this show. <laughs> you bring it out in us. I think we have gone through about 30 years worth of stuff in eight years. Yeah. <laughs> we thought we knew each other when we got married, but now we know each other so much better. And What would, advice would you give for someone else who might be in the middle of a hard time? Just believe that it's going to work out, you know, in the long run and know that there's a plan, that God has a plan for your hardship and maybe that means that you know, someone you love or will love later won't have to go through something you're going through. It's kind of hard to think about those things when you're right in the middle of it, but when you come out on the other side, you kind of can look back and, and see some of those really awesome things that come from it. That's a really encouraging message. Thank you for sharing that. And it's such a special time in your life. I feel so grateful to be with you. Your new album, Years in the Making. Well, would you be willing to maybe play us a song on it? Yeah, sure. What number do you think? Um, I think we're, we might play, want to play lie. He Don't Lie or yes. something like that? That works. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah, I know it's you. Of course I know that voice. It's the same one who told me I didn't have a choice. Never your fault. I was always to blame. And you ran off with another what's her name. And I used to let you come back around. But now I know better. He's holding me now. Sounds so good, y'all. Sunny's debut album is available everywhere now. And after the break, Roosevelt Week shares why the library has become the hippest spot in town. <laughs>